Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Let me first congratulate Ms. Amanda Nguyen and her team at RISE for this creative and innovative way of promoting and raising awareness on the rights of survivors of sexual violence. That it is a fashion show is not a touch of whimsy, but to the point. Beauty is no excuse for travesty, but compelling reason for protection. Amanda told me about this fashion show early this year, and I'm very happy that the plan materialized. My personal advocacy at the UN is to promote and protect what I cannot believe we still have to call the human rights of women, rather than the obvious, the self-evident right of our mothers and sisters, of our wives and daughters, of those who best care for us when we are old and sick, who are the smartest, sharpest, and most focused co-workers to be safe from human trafficking and sexual and gender-based violence. Even putting it that way astounds me. Can any boy contemplate without fury any harm coming to those who constituted the best part of his world? 26 years ago, Filipino men and women from government and civil society marched in Beijing and joined in the clarion call to recognize the obvious. Belatedly at that. Women, no, let me put that better. A woman, any woman, has the absolute, incontestable right over her body and her choices with regard to it. Her choices, no one else's. Men do too, but that's another story. And that sexual assault or any form of sexual violence is one of the worst crimes down there with exploiting children an unspeakable offense to human dignity and physical integrity. Perpetrated as a weapon of war, it is an atrocity whether the life be taken or not. But in fact, it is not a weapon of war, but a revolting male indulgence. Let's not kid ourselves. It is what cowards do to those they outnumber and have at their mercy. Why I have argued that possession of a weapon by a woman is not an aggravating circumstance, but persuasive that she feared for her safety, her honor, her life. The Philippines has played a vital role in promoting the human rights of women and in ending violence against women. The Magna Carta of Women is a model legislation that spells out the protection of women from all forms of violence, harassment, and discrimination. The Anti-Sexual Harassment Act punishes all forms of misbehavior by men in any environment, especially where they exercise authority over women. Laws against rape and other forms of sexual assault are in place with updated penalties to match the gravity of the offense. I am opposed to the death penalty, but I cannot stick to that conviction when it comes to rape. In 2019, Congress passed the Safe Spaces Act. It penalizes catcalling, wolf whistling, and other misogynistic expressions, unwanted sexual advances, and other forms of sexual harassment in schools and workplaces. It also penalizes these acts when done in digital spaces. If we think about it, the rights of survivors of sexual violence should not be difficult but rather obvious to advance every chance we get. Decency and self-respect impel us all, men and women, to stop the abuses and facilitate access to justice and remedy, more so if the victims are children. The sad reality is that the cause of women's and children's safety remains marginalized. Inequality and discrimination that encourages the violence are entrenched in society, deeper in some than others. Unlike the modeling runway, the road to equality and mutual respect is long, rocky, and speed bumped when not roadblocked with social, economic, cultural, and political barriers. Poverty would bog us down right from the start. If it doesn't, we must deal with miles of discrimination 
in a bewildering array of manifestations, persecution, stigmatization, marginalization, and corruption. And if we're really unlucky, natural disasters and humanitarian emergencies would further slow us down. It is when people are most vulnerable to abuse, when they've lost everything, that they are most liable to be abused. We need a study on the role of cowardice in human rights abuses. The brave do not stoop to it. The craven look for any chance to inflict them on the helpless. To add to that, we face the culture thing, which is to say abuses with a history of impunity that oddly elevates them into cultural artifacts. The most defining moment that crystallized it for me was a UN event long before I became ambassador. I was a newspaper publisher. Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore were on stage campaigning against human trafficking and sexual abuse. They were more than pretty faces. And when a European invoked the right to respect of cultures, regardless of content, culture shut back. In India, I saw a three-year-old girl raped so repeatedly, her intestines hung out from her genitals. The European vanished, just like that. Shame works like magic. It doesn't take courage. It just takes decency. It is not difficult. It is easy, unless you stage a fashion show, which I can tell you as a newspaper man who covered everything is a tough act to put together. But public attention wanders. Sometimes you gotta go extra miles. And events like fashion shows feel like that in the making. This event proves it works. It caught everyone's attention at the Department of Foreign Affairs, not least that I had modeled once. I have been fighting for this at the UN and in other venues for a long time. We will succeed if we do it together and do not stop. We will succeed if we are able to impress on everyone that there, but for sheer luck, go my mother, my sister, my wife, my daughters, my friends, indeed the better sex. The principal work and right and duty is to stand with survivors listen to their story, ensuring that they will be safe to tell it, help them to be heard, and help them heal and start life all over again if they ever had a life worth calling it that rather than an endless ordeal. On August 31, something happened out there. Something wicked this way comes for women and girls, and I fear for them. I dread to think of what may be coming for them. We will expose it. We will condemn it. We will never make peace with it, whatever geopolitical excuse is offered. Thank you.